Hello, hello, hello. I am so excited to bring, to be back. You know, I don't get on IG Live often, but here we are, here I am. In case you don't know who I am, this is the Winning Edge Leadership Academy, and I am the executive director and co-founder, Corrine Million. And today we have brought back our series from the spring, What's Next? You, in the past, it was called What's Next with Ronica. Obviously, I'm not Ronica. We love Ronica. Ronica is off doing big things, getting ready to play professionally overseas. But we knew that this series brought so much information. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, girl. How you doing? Over there in Vegas, our game changers are here tuning in. Um, today, we have a great guest, um, Nico Roberts from the NCAA. He is someone I had the pleasure of seeing speak when the Final Four was going to come to Atlanta. He is currently working for Men's Basketball Championship, and he is a former student athlete. Go Jayhawks, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Um, and I'm so looking forward to having him join our conversation and talk more about his journey, provide advice for game changers. Hey, Kareem, what's going on? ESPN in the building. Um, but yeah, we're just super excited to um, bring this series, bring this conversation to you all as we continue to develop the next generation of women and minorities in sports and entertainment, exposing them to the different opportunities outside. Nico is here, so we're going to get Nico in. You know, Korea, I'm good. You know, I'm maintaining, just trying not to melt here in Georgia, uh, but we're all good. We're going to get Nico. I'm going to try to figure out how to. Mm. Nico, if you want to just uh, request to join live, then we'll get you on. Um, but I appreciate everybody tuning in. Stay with us. It's going to be a super informative, casual conversation. Here we go. Go. So excited. I. I am so nervous at the same time every time I come on IG Lives, but having conversations like this with Nico. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks, Kareem. Yes, we have grown, and Nico's conversation today is an example of how we've grown. We really just want to continue bringing um, industry professionals like Nico to the table to share their journey and share more about what they're about. I don't know if this is going to make me sound old. But I remember watching you play at Kansas when I did a Champions Classic at ESPN <laughs> events. <laughs> Your dad gave me a hard time all the time. I was like, okay, I know, okay, okay, I see you. So it's like, I see you play and then I get a chance to see you speak as a panelist in here in Atlanta. You got your, your March Madness hat on. No um, haircut, so I had to. <laughs> listen, listen, this was here. These just came yesterday. So, listen. I was with so, I had you. to throw the hat on. Yeah, I was with you 24 hours ago. I would have had a hat on, too. But um, we accept people as they are, and you're here. Hey, Kirsten, girl, how are you? And I want to just, I always start with the same question for everybody. Who are you? What do you do? And why? All right. My name is Nico Roberts. I work uh, at the NCAA men's basketball department. Um, I work in a, a men's basketball championship. So basically everything I do revolves around uh, the NCAA tournament, Final Four. Um, and recently we took on some, uh, um, some other programming where we have uh, some, uh, um, some camps uh, during, uh, during the summer. So basically everything basketball, why? Um, I honestly couldn't think why not, you know, <laughs> if we're being honest, um, you, you know, you know, you know, in my father, my background, um, you know, my dad has been a college coach since I was three years old, been raised around college basketball and college basketball players ever since then. Um, so it was just a natural course for me. And it's weird. It, it wasn't something that I really sought out, kind of just happened. Yeah. Um, funny being around the NCAA tournament so much in my life, it never really occurred to me that this was even a job to even look at. So, and it, it, it kind of found me. So why I, I love basketball, love college basketball, um, love the opportunity that it brings, the, the feelings that it brings to people, the excitement, 
Um, and I, I always think March Madness is the best time of year. It is. And I love that you kind of perfect segue into um, some of my conversation. You've been around the game for uh, since you were three. Mm -hmm. Before that, I'm sure your mom was at games too when she mm -hmm. was in the womb. So it's literally a part of your blood. It's about, it's a part of who you are. And you, you didn't think that what you're doing right now was a, a role. So let's talk about when you're a student athlete, you're competing four-time Big 12 champs. I think they're still, like, sending Big 12 championship trophies to uh, <laughs> uh, Lawrence. Um, I don't know if the trophy has ever left Lawrence. But so you're competing at a high level. You're, you're studying communications. Were there any experiences that you were doing as a student athlete that you think kind of at least – prepared you a little bit to step into the role that you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, you know, my experience as a walk-on kind of shaped me a lot. Um, you know, in high school, I was always the best player on my team, um, one of the best players in the area. And then going to, you know, a place like Kansas where these are some of the best players in the country, lottery picks, it was a very different experience for me basketball wise. Right. And it forced me to kind of adjust um, how I kind of receive my love from the game. You know, it used to be from playing in games in front of people. Yes. And now it's switched to more of a behind the scenes where we're, we're in practice every day. And, and anybody who's been a walk on knows that, you know, you you have a few jobs. One of your jobs is to make sure your GPA stays high. It, so you got to make yes. sure that you, you stay with the books, you yes, know? Yes. Um, so that, and then you have to work your tail off every day in practice. Um, right. One, because of the amount of talent that the players are playing against with you, you can't, you can't half step because as soon as you do that, you're just going to get killed. So right. it forces you to, to work hard every day and it, um, and it forces you to never fear anybody. You know, I've guarded guys who are NBA all-stars, you know, all conference players, all that stuff. And, and those experiences have taught me to, to kind of take on any any kind of type of challenge that's that's presented to me, yeah. um, and and just know that you know you got to do your job, and it may not always be glamorous, but but it's necessary, you know. And and I think a lot of times the guys on the team, you know, the most rewarding things would be would after after a game when they tell us, man, guarding you guys was harder than guarding our opponents because you ran their offense better than they did, or you know, just di just that. different just different situations like that where um, you know you got to make sure you do your job because it's, it's about the team. It's not about you. Yeah. So you talk about doing the things that are not so glamorous, like mm -hmm. people, especially athletes, they, they want it or, I mean, not even just athletes, but like, I, I don't want to get sound old again, but like a lot of young people are, are striving for this Instagram life. Like whatever I do, I'm, I'm on a yacht or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I got to post about it. Like here I am sitting on this bins that, I just saw in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's like, that's like the number one pose. I'm like, I'm about to go find me cars and just start sitting on them. Go sit at the dealership <laughs> and you'll be all right. <laughs> no, but uh, so you started out as an intern working, um, doing creative for um, the automotive there in Lawrence. You mm -hmm. were intern with Adidas in Portland. You know, shout out Adidas. They're port a supporter of Winning Edge and they're mm -hmm. obviously a, a partner of Kansas. And you eventually got, it took you some time. A lot of people go straight from college and go mm -hmm. to work at the NCAA, but you took some time, but eventually got to um, an internship with NCAA. What about doing those unglamorous things on the court really make you feel like, hey, I can do the unglamorous things as an intern working at these different organizations? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's really just, it's something that, that coach self kind of instilled in us when he, he used to constantly say, it's not about you. It's about Kansas. Yeah. Um, and, and knowing that, you know, regardless of what's going to happen, whether it's going to earn me playing time or whether it's going to earn me a spot in the rotation, you know, whatever it is, um, I got to put my head down and I have to work if, if I want to be successful and, you know, just defining what success for what success is for me. And that's what I did you at those other places, you know, um, it was kind of a humbling experience to work at a car dealership for, <laughs> For, for two years after you were just a, I mean, kind of a basketball star in that same yes. town, you know? Yes. So, you know, little kids that used to ask for my autograph, I'm now filling up a snack basket for you in the, in the, in the waiting room, you know? So it's, it's a different experience and it's something that, it, and I think it was actually, you know, really good for me, 
you know, because it's so easy, you know, especially in a town like Lawrence where people love basketball so much to, to think you're a little bit more than you really are. Um, you know, and I think I learned that, you know, there and then at Adidas, you know, um, you know, it was a good experience, but I, I probably didn't take full advantage of it. Um, and, and it's like those lessons, you know, of, you know, seeking out work, seeking out people to talk to, even though you may not be assigned something, you know, creating projects for yourself, um, you know, finding ways to, to learn and get your own professional development, um, you know, failing to do that at some of my earlier employment spots helped me to take advantage of where I was at the NCA and make sure um, I did what I was supposed to do, be aggressive. And, and that's how I found that you kind of create a, a better reputation for yourself is that. when you don't mind doing the dirty work or you don't mind, um, you know, you're inquisitive and, and, and you, you don't mind speaking up and you're aggressive because you show that you want it. And that's often what kind of helps you get a, a better reputation and it eventually got me a full-time position. Yeah, so I love that you mentioned like you weren't being aggressive early on. And I think it's something that happens a lot, especially with student athletes. Why do you, I think we can talk about like that's a problem, but why do you think you kind of went in not doing that? Like what was holding you back? Let's talk about that so we can, sometimes if people don't hear it, they don't think it's real for them. You know, just like mental health, like depression, anxiety, like, oh, that is, that can't happen to me. But mm -hmm. somebody that looks like them talks about it. Maybe they're like, oh, yeah, maybe I am experiencing that. So what was the thing or the things that was holding you back from being more aggressive in those early roles? Um, I think the first thing is, um, as, a, as an athlete, you know how to be aggressive and insert yourself into situ certain situations. Like, if I'm not playing well, all right, I'm going to go all out on defense, try to get myself into rhythm, um, maybe try to get in a little bit closer before shooting because, you know, my – my shooting stroke isn't feeling as good as it as I had in the past. You know, you know how to do it in your sport and you have it in you, but it's really just learning how to transfer that into how you do that in real life. Right. You know, so um, I think a lot of it was, you know, you get into these situations and I thought, oh, I got an internship with Adidas. I had a couple people tell me, oh, we'll be able to get you a full time job and all that stuff. And you kind of think you made it. You coast. I was hanging out in Portland. It's summer. It's nice. We're hanging out, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. So it's a, it, it's. It, it's it's very easy to get comfortable and you think all right well i'm doing pretty much what they ask you to do what, I, what they're asking me to do and you don't really think about that it's got to be more you know yeah. and it was it was it was you know after you know being at adidas for a while and then you know waiting for those two three four months when they're telling you, oh yeah we got something coming down the pipe we got something coming yeah you're gonna have a job soon and then after a while you're like i'm still have no job and i've been here for you know I, i've been at home for a while this is you know this is not what i signed up for no you know so it's it's about you know making sure that you're never staying in your in your comfort zone get out of your comfort zone try to talk to people try to find new things you know and and just doing enough isn't always enough you gotta you gotta make sure you do more and and that's how you really impress people yeah, what was what was the turning point for you and be more aggressive? Like, was there like you sought out someone to talk to and get advice from, or you sought out that new assignment or that work you weren't necessarily assigned? Like, what was the tangible thing that made you say like, "Oh, being aggressive, I is good." Like, I'm mm -hmm. getting buckets right now by doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of it was some self reflection. I mean, um, I was living at home. I mean, I, I was working at a dealership for about two years after Adidas and, and I was unhappy. I was living at home. I have friends who were playing in the league. I had friends who were, you know, successful in whatever other ventures that they were kind of looking at. And, yeah. and, and not that there's anything wrong with working at a car dealership. It just wasn't what I wanted. That wasn't my goal. Um, and it was more about kind of like, I'm, I ain't going back home, you know? So, so once you get that opportunity, um, you know, make sure you take full. I mean, I think like one thing I did was, um, like NCA's business casual, everybody's wearing like a polo or something like that and, and khakis. Like for the first five or six months, I wore a shirt and tie every single day. Yes. You know, just to, just to, just to kind of stick out. And people used to make fun of me and they'd be like, you know, you have to do this. And, and damn, I hated waking up in the morning to put ties with shirts because I'm not even good at that stuff. I'm not, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I didn't want to do it, but it was something that, that ended up helping me and it makes you stick out and it right. makes you, uh, um, and, and it helps people take notice. So, um, it was more of, you know, every day I try to think, well, what can I do differently? And obviously with my experience at the tournament, I had different ideas. You know, this was a job that's sparking my interest. It's, it's somewhere that I really wanted to, 
I really felt like I um, I had a place in. Yeah. So um, I, I think that, you know, going through those early experiences just made sure that I took advantage of this because I knew even if I don't get a job here, I'm going to make sure that I have people in my corner that can give me legitimate references and get me onto my next spot, wherever that is. Yeah, I love that you were doing the little things that your friends were giving you a hard time about. Because I think so often that peer pressure of like being cool or not trying to do too much keeps people from wanting to do the shirt and tie thing. Like it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, and like athletics, that's what it is. Polos, Coco, Christina, uh, Nico, mm -hmm. reached out. She's about to be reaching out. She's a national champion. <laughs> Dame. I've known her for a long time. She wants got to work you. I got you. NCAA, so she's about to be hitting you up. So, um, sure. but uh, so those little things uh, about the student tie is great. And I think one thing too that maybe is made overlooked a little bit is like you were pretty consistent with what you were about, even at the automotive. Uh, at I don't know, like you said, automotive, the cars it dealer. <laughs> It was Crown Automotive, so you're right. So I know you looked at the resume. I see you. Listen, listen. I do research. I'm not a com. I'm not a com. I got you by any means. But if there's if there's anything I've learned from Maria is do your research. So, mm -hmm. um, but with the automotive or with car sales, the Adidas, the internship at NCAA, creative services, comms, branding has kind of been something that has been consistent from for you. Um, the event coordination. A lot of people mm -hmm. like how thing, events look, but not too many people embrace the behind the scenes for events. And so what made um, those two areas kind of be something like, this is my lane. Like, I know I'm a mid-range jumper. If the team needs mm -hmm. a big splitter, they're they going to come to Nico for that. So mm -hmm. why was it important for you to be kind of consistent in what you were able to bring to the table? And um, why was starting early with being in that lane um has it helped you i mean i'd say that for me it was it's just kind of what interests me and what gets me excited i mean um you know people think that you know if you work for the final four or march madness i'm hanging out with the players or i'm doing this or i'm doing that i couldn't tell you about one fan fest what it was like nope. what the music festival was like <laughs> i haven't met any of the talent i mean if we're being honest at the games i'm I've got one eye on the game. I've got another eye looking to the right to make sure security is okay. Yes. I got somebody emailing me right now telling me, hey, the teams are arriving. You know, it, it, it's not even, it's, it's not about glamour. And I think for me, what, what, what is most exciting for me or what's, what's cool about it for me is seeing what we produce, you know, and what, you know, that I'd rather see, I'd rather have a picture of the event and you can see how dope this event is than me in the middle of the final four stadium, like, yeah, it's on me. Cause you know, it's not on me, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a team thing. And I think, you know, um, it, it's just been something that that's always caught my interest. And, um, and I think I always look for kind of new opportunities. So i um, looking at bringing from different perspectives or comms from different perspectives, but I mean, even getting into whether it's budgets, um, it's into, um, you know, player development, whatever it is, um, I want to continue to kind of expand my foundation and, and, yes. and my skill set, like same thing as like an athlete would, you know, to, to make sure that I'm well-rounded and I can kind of jump into anything. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just kind of, it, and that those were some areas that I jumped into. I didn't necessarily choose them, but I was able to do all right in those. And I'm just constantly kind of looking to see what else, what's next and what else can I bring to the table. I like that you kind of talked earlier in the, uh, the previous answer. You talked about, you know, I've been to the Final Fours. I know about that experience. And now you're in full time with NCAA Women's Championships. And you were able to bring a unique program that I'm a huge fan of, um, the, college, the College Basketball Academy. And mm -hmm. how, well, one, why did you feel that that was necessary? Like, we've been mm -hmm. having the Final Four forever. That wasn't something that was there. And how did your experience from a player kind of play into why it was necessary to kind of bring this professional development to this to the March Madness when there are so many other things that people could do be doing with NABC and Fan Fest and music festival and all that? So asking why we started the, the College Basketball Academy? Yes. So, I mean, a lot of that stemmed from kind of the FBI investigations that hit college basketball. Um, and they created the, the Commission on College Basketball that was led by Condoleezza Rice. And they basically right, gave uh, <laughs> they gave a bunch of directives to the NCA, um, some recommendations saying, "Hey, 
these are some things that need to be done, we think, to kind of um, make the climate of college basketball a little healthier. Um, and one of them was for us to, you know, operate these, these camps, um, you know, during the summers to kind of provide a, um, an experience for, for student athletes or for prospective student athletes that they may not be getting elsewhere. Um, so when we jumped right into that, you know, and we found out in like August of, I think it was 2018, um, and we had to put it on in July. So we had 11 months to put it together. And once we figured that, once we figured out we were doing it, um, I was one of the next people to jump into that role just because of my experience playing in AAU and being around college basketball as a player. So able to bring that kind of experience. Um, but we looked at it as a, as a, you know, as a, as a new challenge. I mean, we, like you said, we've been running the final four forever, March Madness forever. Um, and it put our, and it put our group in a place where we had to get out of our comfort zone. Um, but it is one of those things like you're doing it and you can see like, this is the mission. This is why we're doing it. We're doing it to, to, to create something positive um, and to give, whether it's players a, a chance to be evaluated, coaches a chance to evaluate. I mean, life skills, talking about, you know, personal brand, talking about the dangers of social media. Um, we had the NBA or the, and the NBA MBPA come in to talk about what the MBPA does, to talk about the uh, NBA undergraduate advisory committee. We had our eligibility center um, folks come in there talking about core courses. What do you need to, to graduate? What are, you know, so a lot of things that they may not be getting at other places. And then, um, on top of that, we foot the bill for everything, and we invited their parents too. So their parents, yeah. So their parents are there, the players are there, and they're all getting that same education, you know. And a lot of this stuff parents may not have known. Um, and you know, it was a it was a learning experience for us. And you know, we think we we know a, a lot of ways that we can make it even better, um, you know. But um, it was just something that you can just see, like they're they're very good intentions. I know people say you know different things about the NCA. I mean, I, I don't think with this initiative you can question the intentions there or you can question right. who that was for you know right. that was for that was for players that was for parents that was for coaches people that are essential for us and people that are important to us and do so much for the NCA and the membership and all that stuff so um it was a it was a really cool a cool experience and I mean even um you know one of my assistant one of my assistant coaches from Kansas you know his son who had no scholarships offers ended up getting a scholarship to Kennesaw State and he just went up to school a couple um, a couple of we a couple of weeks ago, yes, you know, yes. and, and, and they gave us credit for, you know, giving him that opportunity because he ended up blowing up there, you yes. know, and those are the kind of things that I kind of, that I kind of live for that kind of get me going. Yeah. So how have you sought out professional development for yourself and like, how do you grow? I think from, from your background and just hearing you speak a lot of what you do or your, your professional development comes on the job. Like you're putting yourself mm -hmm. out there learning new things, but outside of on the job, what have you been doing to uh, be a continuous learner? I've been trying to get into reading a little bit. I'm not a huge reader, but I mean, I've got into a couple different books. Um, you know, I, my boss got me into TED Talks. So I watch a lot of different TED Talks. I think they, there are a lot of different, I mean, I, I was watching one yesterday. Um, it was a woman talking about um, what she learned being an, a divorce attorney for men about fatherhood. You know, and it's just random things like that that may not be super relevant to me, but I, there's just certain things you just kind of pick up, you yeah. know, and, I've, and, I, and I listened to another one about with, uh, with Ray Lewis talking about pain, mental, physical pain. That was really, um, really, really interesting. Um, but I think also just talking to people, um, you know, I have a, a really great mentor who's also my boss who helps set me up with different people, whether it's in the NBA, whether it's in some of the broadcasting businesses, some, you know, all those things and talking to them about what they do. Um, you know, what they love about their jobs, running maybe some things that are going on in my life um, past them to see what they think. Um, but it, it just really just talking to people and then also just like asking for new, new things to do, you know. Yeah. So um, I talked to my boss. I said, hey, I want to learn a little bit more about corporate relations. I don't really know about sponsors, um, uh, managing accounts and all that stuff. And she found an opportunity for me to be kind of like the go between between men's and basketball in our corporate relations department where I'm helping kind of facilitate that communication and the same thing with broadcast. So at the same time that I'm exchanging information with them between our two groups, I'm also learning about corporate relations. I'm also learning about how they manage those relationships, managing expectations, you know, all those different things that I never would have, you know, understood, but it's really just about asking, you know, showing that you can do the work that you have in front of you right then, but then also asking for more. And even if it's, not something that's going to be fun. All professional development is good to professional development. You can't just ask for the cool stuff. Yes, I think uh, I always say uh, closed mouths don't get fed. Right? That's exactly right. 
Yeah, so if you're not asking your mentor who's your advocate, who's meant to to amplify and elevate you, like, hey, I'm interested in corporate co communications or learning more about that, then you're not going to get that opportunity to be the liaison and exchange ideas and learn. So I love that. Before I let you go, part of your responsibilities at the NCAA is the internship program. You manage interns. We have a lot of Adila Gaither she's on. You know, I hope she's someone that takes advantage and reaches out to you. I think she would be um, she would learn a lot from you and what you're doing up there. But what is it that you are looking or what qualities outside of the resume? Because the resume can be misleading sometimes. If I've been a Big 12 champion for the last four years, my resume ain't going to have a ton of internships, right? Mm -hmm. But what are the qualities? Like if I somehow get 30 minutes to talk to Nico, what is it that you're looking for when you want to bring an intern onto the team? Um, different perspectives. I mean, we have people that have been running the tournament for 15, 20 years. So a lot of these people understand what it takes to run the championship. And, you know, it's always easier when you have somebody who's like a manager or a player who understands the tournament and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I'd say different perspectives, looking at things in different ways. Right. Um, someone who's not afraid to, um, to ask questions, not afraid to, um, you know, get down into the details, you know. So if we're asking you to, you to do a research project on every single Division One school, I mean – you do it, you put your head down, you get it done. I mean, um, I think we're, you know, we're also looking for, you know, diversity. We want to get people who are from different backgrounds. We want to get people who, not just diversity in skin color and, and, and ethnicity, but also diversity in thought, you know? Um, so we don't want, we want everybody in the room to have a different opinion, you know? Um, Maybe not drastically different opinions yes. like this way and this way, but we want things to be, we want things to be, um, we want to have a dialogue. We, we don't want everybody to say, oh yeah, we agree. And, and, yes. and that's it because we don't get any we don't get any better like that um but i mean i mean for all the people who are interested you know um it's about reaching out i mean linkedin is something that i never really took advantage of when i was younger but it is now so you can see who's in each department and you can and you can learn about um you know what's going on in each department and, and what it takes to be in there because a lot of people can do the job um right. but it's finding that balance between um you in your professional development and you getting better and then also you leaving your input or some type of legacy on our group so that way you know three years down the road that small tweak you made makes a big impact on our on our tournament you know whether it be just with student athlete gifts or it be um with another way to um approach coaches about how they're going to do their interviews and you know or there, there are so many different opportunities it's just thinking about things in in different ways and um and showing that you have the ability to kind of um to kind of put it forward. I'm going to steal Ronica. She was really good about asking this question. What is Nico now telling Nico when he was stepping on to Kansas, uh, to Lawrence, to camp um, in Lawrence on campus? What is he telling that Nico to make sure that you're starting to kind of pay attention to? Versus, damn, man, do at least one in. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, if you, I, I, I honestly, <laughs> didn't start thinking about a lot of that stuff until after just because especially with big time sports you're in such a bubble you know and your perspective is so limited because it's about the team and um you're just thinking about the game and and, and a lot of times especially when you're a, um, a walk-on on a power five school so yes. many of the guys on your team are talking about going pro there aren't many guys talking about hey what internships are you thinking about doing or what do you want to you know so right. you lose out on some of those conversations and you know i didn't have a lot of friends that were outside of you know the team just because of just the way that the campus is and, yes. um, you know, so we kind of closed ourselves in and it was kind of like, we all we got. So, yeah. um, you know, you don't hear that from other people. Um, another thing I, I, I would say is, you know, um, just start reaching out to people. I mean, when I, I mean, I, I joke about, you know, working at the, um, the car dealership and all that stuff. But the reason I got that opportunity was because when we used to go to like alumni events or donor events and all that stuff, you know, everybody's trying to get out there as soon as I can, as soon as they can, Always. you know, I would, I would at least go and, Hey, you showed up. Hey, I'm, I'll shake your hand. Hey, how you doing? I'm Nico. Nice to meet you. All that kind of stuff. And it ended up being one of those donors that helped me get a job, you know, that because it was his dealership that put me on. So, I love that. you know, it, it's just a matter of, and that's something my, my dad always taught me is just make sure you're good to people, you know, um, regardless of the situation, because you never know whether or how they can help you or how it might affect them. Um, so I, I'd say just focus in on more, you know, internships, focus in more on, um, you know, talking to people about, about different opportunities um, from an academic standpoint, I did pretty well. So I, I don't think I struggled too much there. But um, I think it would be more just trying to um, just get involved a little bit more.
I love it. Christina Silan, she talked about that in our What's Next series in the spring. Like she had at Notre Dame, they stay in the dorms all the whole time. So, um, mm -hmm. but she had uh, roommates that weren't athletes. So, and she, that added so much value to her relationship building. And that was great. And I, the donor piece, like they cheer for you on game day. You know, they donate money to the school. They're putting a lot of effort. Let them put effort into you being um that professional outside the sport and i think mm -hmm. it's okay like you don't you're not you're not getting a car from him you're getting a job you know so take advantage of those i appreciate you taking the time i appreciate you putting the hat on and joining <laughs> us and dropping <laughs> gems because was here we got game changers <laughs> on here we got so much love i appreciate you way to be on the linkedin that's how i got you um, that's right and we're gonna make sure our game changers reach out to you stay connected we appreciate you and uh thank you again um enjoy the rest of your week i appreciate the opportunity and appreciate you doing this because i mean this would have been great for for people like me when i was still coming up and all that stuff so i appreciate you doing this that's probably makes a lot of difference for for a lot of people maybe not this one but maybe your other ones be a little bit better oh this will and thank <laughs> you for that because I am so nervous every time I get on here and my camera was falling down. So I appreciate it. I'm going to keep with it. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye. Let's see here. Okay. So that was Nico Roberts with NCAA. He is awesome. He dropped mad gems. We didn't get to any questions. I didn't see too many questions, but... We're coming back today at 7 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you set your notifications, whatever you need to do. Come back here. We're talking to Yao Williams with Athletes First. Super dope guy. Been all over the world doing his things and partnerships. Has a lot of knowledge to drop. If you appreciated this conversation with Nico, just know you'll appreciate the conversation with Yao. Tell your friends. Bring your teammates. You know, y'all tired of the Zooms? Come on IG Live with us. Um, drop us questions and we'll see you soon. We game change.